So this section is 2.4, which is real zeros of polynomial functions. We're going to talk about long division and the division algorithm, remainder and factor theorems, synthetic division, rational zero theorem, and upper and lower bounds. So the division algorithm for polynomials says if we have f of x and d of x are polynomials and we're dividing them, then the then there are unique polynomials that are q of x, which is our quotient of x, and r of x, which is our remainder of x, so that our divisor times our quotient plus the remainder is equal to f of x, which is our dividend. And we'll talk about that, all those different parts here more in a second. Okay, so example one is to use polynomial long division. So using long division to find the quotient and remainder when we have 2x to the fourth plus x to the third minus three, and we're dividing by x squared plus x plus one. Okay, so we have 2x to the fourth plus x to the third. Notice I'm missing an x squared, so I'm gonna leave a zero term. So zero x squared plus 0x minus 3. So I have to put placeholders in when I'm missing some of those terms. And then I have over here x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so what I look at here is I look at the x squared and I look at the 2x to the fourth. And I say to myself, x squared times what will give me 2x to the fourth? And that would be 2x squared. So I'm going to put that right up here. And notice I'm lining it up, oops, lining it up with the x squared term. So now I multiply. I take the 2x squared times x squared and I get 2x to the fourth. I take 2x squared times x and I get 2x cubed. And I take 2x squared times 1 and I get 2x squared. So now I'm going to put parentheses around that and we're going to subtract. So those first terms cancel. My next term, I have x cubed minus 2x cubed, which is going to give me minus x cubed. Then I have 0 minus 2, which is minus 2x squared. Then I bring down my next term, which is 0x. Okay, now I start again, and I say x squared times what gives me negative x cubed? And that would be minus x. Then I multiply. Negative x times x squared is negative x cubed. Negative x times x is negative x squared. Negative x times 1 is negative x. Now I'm going to subtract. Okay, the first terms cancel. Negative 2 minus a negative 1, so that's plus, is going to be minus x squared. 0 minus a negative x will be plus x. And then I bring down the minus 3. So then I say x squared times what gives me my negative x squared, which is minus 1. And then I multiply negative x squared. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times 1 will be negative 1. Then we subtract. The first terms cancel. x minus negative x. So that's minus a negative is plus. So that would be 2x, and then negative 3 minus a negative 1 would be minus 2. So then we stop at this point because there's nothing I can multiply x squared by to equal 2x, so I am done. This right here is my remainder. So I write it as 2x minus 2 over this right here is my divisor. So I write it as x squared plus x plus 1. Oops, I'm off the screen. Okay, this underneath the division sign is my dividend. And this whole answer, including the remainder, is my quotient. Oops, <laughs> off the screen. Okay, so that is a refresher on how we do long division of polynomials. 
So the remainder theorem says that if you do long division or synthetic division, that your remainder is the same as finding f of that k value. So this example 2 says find the remainder when f of x equals x, 2x squared minus x plus 12 is divided by x plus 3. So I'm going to take 2x squared minus x plus 12 and divide it by x plus 3. So x goes into 2x squared, 2x times, put 2x up there, and I'm going to multiply 2x squared, 2x times 3 is 6x, I'm going to subtract, so negative x minus 6 would be negative 7x, bring down the plus 12, x times negative 7 would equal negative 7x, Negative 7 times 3 would be negative 21. Then I'm going to subtract 12 minus a negative 21, so it's really plus, is going to give me the answer of 33. So that means that my remainder is 33. So the, another way of thinking that of that is f of what my 0 would be here. So instead of x plus 3, it would be f of negative 3 is equal to 33. So what that means is if I plug negative 3 into both of the, these x's, I would get 33 out as my solution. So the remainder theorem says that you can do long division, and your remainder will tell you what f of that k value would be. Okay, so the next thing is the factor theorem. So the factor theorem is just saying that if you do division and you end up with a, fact, with a remainder of zero, that means that your divisor is a factor of that dividend. So if you're doing the division and you get zero as a remainder, it means that whatever you were dividing by was a factor of your original problem. Okay, so now we're going to talk about synthetic division. So synthetic division is a whole lot easier. So in synthetic division, we write, on the inside, we write the coefficients. So we have 3, negative 2, 1, negative 5. And again, if we were missing a value of x, then we would put a 0. But we have x cubed, x squared, x, and no x constant. And then our k value. So k goes out here. K is whatever would make your divisor equal 0. So we put a 1. So it's x minus 1, so it would be positive 1 would be our K value. So then the way that we do synthetic division is we, first of all, drop down the first number always. Then we multiply by K. So we take 3 times 1, and we get 3. And then we add down. So negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 plus, oops, 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 5 plus 2 is negative 3. And when we're done, I always put a box around it because that reminds me that that's my remainder. So whenever you're doing synthetic division, we can only do it when we just have a power of x here, not x squared. So it's going to be one less than the degree we started with. So this would be 3x squared plus x plus 2 plus, and then I'm going to put negative 3 over x minus 1. So that would be my answer to that division problem. Okay, so then the rational zero theorem or the rational zero test is to take the factors of the constant over the factors of the leading coefficient. So we talk about the P over Q test. And that what that does is back in the days where we didn't have graphing calculators, um, people needed a way to, to, to kind of narrow down your possible rational zeros. So um, we would have to do, you could possibly have to do synthetic division for every possible rational zero until you narrowed it down. Thankfully, we now have graphing calculators, so we can narrow down, we can first do our possible rational zeros, then we can check a graph, and then we can do synthetic division for what we see. 
that's kind of how we approach it now that we have technology. So the upper and lower bounds, similar idea to back when we didn't, like when there were no calculators to determine um, your zeros, you could determine based on the output of your synthetic division, you could determine if it was an upper bound or a lower bound. So if you ended up, so let's say you did your synthetic division, let's say you had a positive number of here, and then you had a positive, 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 or zero answer out of your synthetic division. This would tell you that this was an upper bound. And what that means is that like if this number was three, then you wouldn't have any zeros above three. So that meant that three would be the uh, upper bound and your zero would have to be below three. Same thing if you had a negative number here and then you had, let's say, a positive, negative, positive, negative. Um, so alternating positive and negative outputs of your synthetic division, that would mean that that number right there would be a lower bound. Again, this was helpful when we didn't have calculators. We would have to do synthetic division until we found all of the solutions. But we have technology that we can use now, so it's not necessarily that we need to use this idea, but it's still important to understand how the result of your synthetic division can help you determine if it's an upper bound or lower bound. <clears throat> okay, so example seven. We're going to find all real zeros. So my suggestion is the process that we go through with finding all real zeros. First, you find your P over Q list. Second, you graph it and determine if there's numbers that look like it's crossing from your P over Q list. And then you do synthetic division to verify. And then you can determine what your and possibly need to factor or use quadratic formula or any of those other um, ways that we solve to find your remaining zeros. Okay, so the P over Q list in this case. So your P value is 36 and your Q value is 2. So 36 has a lot of factors. So we could say 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and 6 and 6. So those are all your factors of 36. And then your Q, your leading coefficient, is 1 and 2. So we could take the time to divide all those out, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to use it kind of as an idea. And then I'm going to graph this. So I'm going to show you. Let's go to De Oop, no, this. Go to Desmos real quick. So let's type in, so we have 2x, oops, to the fifth, minus x to the fourth. minus 2x cubed minus 14x squared minus 6x plus 36. Okay, so if I look at this, I see negative 1.5, I see 1.456, and I see 2. Okay. So if I go back to my graph here, or back to my problem, so I saw negative 1.5. And if I look here, I know that negative 3 over 2 is on my P over Q list. So that makes sense. And then we saw positive 2. That's also on my list right here. Now we saw 1.456. That's not on my list, so that's one that we're going to have to talk about in a minute. Okay, so we have two possible rational zeros. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a synthetic division. 
So I have 2, negative 1, negative 2, negative 14, negative 6, 36. So I'm gonna, let's start with 2. This would be 2, 4, 3, 6, 4, 8, negative 6, negative 12, negative 18, negative 36, 0. And that works. Okay. Now the nice thing with synthetic division is once you've determined something works as a zero, you don't need to go back to the original problem. You can actually just use your result. So we can use our result and work it down. So we were currently at a to the fifth power. Now we're at the to the fourth power. And now I'm going to use negative 1.5. So I drop this down to 2. 2 times negative 1.5 would be negative 3. That would be 0. This would be 0. 4 times negative 1.5 would be negative 6. Negative 12 times negative 1.5 would be 18. And that would be 0. So it shows that that works too. So this is 2x cubed plus 4x minus 12. Now, sometimes when you end up with a result like that, you can factor it and solve that way, but this right here is not factorable. So on this problem, we were asked to find all the real zeros and then determine which ones were rational or irrational. So all of these up here were real. So our real zeros were negative 1.5, 2 and approximately 1.456 and I'm putting that approximately because if I write it as 1.456 it looks like it's a terminating decimal and therefore rational. So our rational numbers were negative 1.5 and 2. This number right here was irrational and we know that because it was not in my p over q list. So 1.456 is not one of the options that I could have come up with when I took all the factors of 36 and divided them by the factors of 1 or 2. Okay, so that's how we find those real zeros. Now we have our last example, similar here, where we're going to find all the real zeros of this function. So we have, again, we have a p over q. So this time I have 8. Looks like not equal to, yeah. Okay, so 8 is 1, 8, 2, and 4, and then 1 and 2. So if I were to, this one is a little bit more manageable, so I could multiply these out, and I could say, okay, this is 1, 2, 4, and 8, and then 1 half. So all of my... Um, Possible rational zeros are either positive or negative, 1, 2, 4, 8, or 1 half. Okay, so then the next thing we always do is we go to our graph. So I'm going to go to my graph here. So I'm going to type in 2x to the, oops, to the fourth minus 7x cubed minus 8x squared plus 14x plus 8. Okay, so I've got negative 1.414. I've got negative 0.5. I've got positive 1.414 and I've got 4. So again, remember we're picking possible rational zeros. So from that list right there of those four, it looks like negative a half and four are the ones I want to check. So if I go back here, negative one half and four. So we're going to do synthetic division. So I have two, negative seven, negative eight, 14, and eight. And then we're going to say 4. Let's, I always start with the whole number. Okay, so we'll say 4. So we drop down the 2. That's 8, 1, 4, negative 4, negative 16, negative 2, negative 8. Okay, so that one worked. So 4 is good. Then I'm going to try negative 1 half. So that would be 
2, 2 times negative 1 half would be negative 1, so it would be 0, 0, negative 4, positive 2, and 0. So that works. So my result would be 2x squared minus 4. So now this one is one I can actually solve out the rest of the way. So I can say 2x, 4, 2x squared minus 4 equals 0. I can add the 4, divide by 2, so I get x squared equals 2, which means that x equals positive and negative square root of 2. So my zeros, all my real zeros here, would be 4, negative 1 half, square root of 2, and negative square root of 2. And what that means is that these are real, and these right here are, are irrational. They're, sorry, they're all real. <laughs> these right here are rational, and these right here are irrational. So square root of 2 and negative square root of 2 are irrational. 4 and negative 1 half are rational. They're all real. Okay, so again, that's how we find all the real zeros of a polynomial. Let me know if you have any questions.